Colossians chapter 3. Friday morning around, five, around 4 o'clock in the morning, Friday morning, I woke up and I was sick. I never get sick, but boy am I out of it right now. If I pass out, I'll be okay. Just let me sleep. Because, so I will not be around after service. I'm taken off. I'm going to go back to bed. So um, Jacob's down, and uh, Kelly and Anna have not gotten it yet. Uh, but uh, uh, Kelly's just serving everybody, and, and uh, she says, when I get this, remember what I do for you. <laughs> And I was like, okay, ma'am, I'll, I'll take care of you, babe. And uh, so anyways, um, just keep us in prayer. We're doing okay, but let's get in the Word. Colossians chapter 3. As you know, Colossians is a, a book that's a book of warning to a group of people that are surrounded by pagan and false teachings. And in Colossians chapter 3, he says, If you were raised with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. We have been raised with Christ. It's true life, a born-again lifestyle. We have been justified. And in verse 2, he says, set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. So he says, hey, think about these things that are heaven things, above things, God things, not on things of this world. I'll tell you, after this last week, I, I needed that. I need to hear that. All the chaos of the election, all the craziness of cares of the things that are going on in this world. I just want to set my mind on things above, not on things of this world. And in verse 3, he says, for you died and your life was hidden with Christ in God. We died to this world. We have died to flesh and to sin. But it, this is our sanctified lives, and our, and our life right now is hidden with Christ in God. Special, loved. It, it, he uh, hides us. It's a hidden treasure. You know, that's the neat thing about God, is that he considers us a treasure, a beautiful treasure, something that's special. And so he hides us with Christ in him. How great is that? We talked about how it's like a, like a Russian nesting doll, and he we ha and he he hides it. It's a um, it's like a pirate with his treasure. It's a kid with something special in his treasure chest. It's something that God loves, and it's us, and He hides us in Him, and that's how we are right now. And when Christ, who is our life, appears then you also will appear with him in glory. This is our future, our glorified state in the future. Speaking of the second coming of Christ Jesus, I will be with him in glory. And so with all that said, it's going to the whole compass, the whole, the whole broad spectrum of our salvation, justification, sanctification, and glorification. Now he's going to go back to our sanctified life, the now what we're supposed to be like now, what we're going through now. And in verse 5 he says, and we'll just read the whole passage, Therefore put to death your members which are on this earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now, you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie at one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian nor Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Now back at verse 5, because we're raised, like it says in verse 1 through 4, because we're seeking, because our minds are on above things and not on earthly things, because we have died and we're hidden with Christ and we have that hope and glory, he tells us, because of that, therefore, therefore, put to death your members. What are you, what are you talking about? Put to death my members. What does that mean? which are on earth. What, what are these members? It's plural. M multiple one. What, what, what is a member? In the Greek, it's, it's a word for body part or these things that are part of our lives. Put them to death. P 
Paul is speaking here of something called the flesh. The flesh is something that we deal with constantly. A person who says that he or she does not deal with the flesh is highly mistaken, deluded, or a liar. We all deal with it. It's a horrible thing. And it's something that we'll deal with until the day we get to heaven. Before Jesus, our lives, before we gave our life to Jesus Christ, we lived for self. We lived for the world. We lived for Satan. And after we gave our life to Jesus Christ, we lived for God. We have been forgiven. We get a new life. We, but we still have this body with its desires. And the flesh, this, this body, it wants to be in charge. It wants to be satisfied. It's sinful, carnal cravings that we have to do things the way we want to do it. It wants to be, it wants to be served. And you know, the flesh just pops up. You ever had that before? You may be having a real good day with Jesus Christ. You may be popping praise music all day long. And you're just in the car, just be bopping along, and then all of a sudden, the flesh just comes out. It just happens. It's a horrible thing. I'm going to admit to you guys, it happens to me quite often. It does. It just happens. It's a constant war. The Bible says that it's a war. And it's so fast. It's so quick. You're like, where did that come from? It's a ninja. It's a ninja. You're like, I thought this was taken care of. I thought this was at the cross. We were driving through Albuquerque. I got to confess. <laughs> I, some of you guys have heard the story already. I was driving through Albuquerque on our way back to California, and we, were, we had to make a detour south of Albuquerque, and we had to go, we, we couldn't go through Flagstaff because there was snow, and I don't do snow. And so we drove all the way down an extra two hours and cut across uh, through uh, Tucson and all that stuff. So we were made to make that, had to make that southward bend from Albuquerque. When we were on the 40, I noticed a police helicopter. I noticed police on the freeway. I'm all like, man, we're in a chase. I said, man, I wonder if they run their chases just like us in LA, you know? I was like, an Albuquerque police chase. I'm like, hey, it's a police chase, guys. We're behind it. There was a line of police cars that were blocking the 40, and, but my freeway was going to go south. So I took the big bridge, and I said, okay, here we go. I said, can you see it? Can you see it? We couldn't see anything. And as we come down, there was other police officers, about 25, 30 cops all over the place. And I'm like, what is going on? They shut down the whole intersection. And I look over, and there are these cops, and they're in motorcycle formation. And I said, somebody's here. And I realized, and I saw it, the presidential limousine. It was Joe Biden. Wow. I was like, oh. And I yell out, it's the president. It's, well, I didn't say that. Hey, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. I said, it's, it's the presidential limousine. It's the beast. You know, they call it the beast. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I went to get the picture. I rolled down the window. I was like, oh, my goodness. There he was. You saw him, and I saw him. <laughs> there he is. And as I went for my phone to take a picture, I rolled down the window. My flesh got upset. It was, it was the quickest thing I've ever experienced in my life. From take a picture to this thing and to this, uh, to take a picture, I'm like, it was like everything since 2020 just kind of boiled. <laughs> High gas prices, COVID restrictions. And I'm just, I, I, and it just hit. Literally within two seconds, I was mad. And it just, and I just went, oh, there he is. <laughs> and I was the only person on that freeway. I don't know how I got around it. And Kelly goes, there he is. And I just, and my flesh, 
Instead of me extending my hand to take a picture, I extended my hand in another fashion. And I did it. And he saw it. Now, if that breaks your heart and say, Andrew, you're a pastor, you shouldn't do it. Trust me, I know. And I remember, and my kids saw it. And Anna goes, Dad, did you just do that to the president? And I'm like, yeah. And I was like, I was such a bad witness. The flesh. And you're like, oh, pff, I would never do that. Oh, you've done other things. <laughs> don't, don't, you know, if you go over and say, well, I've never done that. You have done other things. The flesh is that fast, that vicious, and that quick. The only difference between you and me is I'm willing to mention it from the pulpit. <laughs> But I will tell you one thing. I wasn't, I was mad. But I remember confessing all the way through the desert, looking at the desert around Albuquerque going, this is my soul right here. This is my soul. This is how, I, I, oh, I'm just, it's so fast it just pops up like a ninja. Temptation. Have you ever had temptation just pop up out of nowhere? Just like, where, where did this come from? A perversion, an anger, a pride, anger. These things are flesh. Those are the members. Galatians chapter 5. Look what it says. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. It's very... See, they're coming for me. No, I'm just... There he is. Galatians chapter... Oh, that's Ephesians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17 says this. It, let's just start in verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit... And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If I was just in the spirit, I wouldn't have done the things of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Guys, let me tell you something. These things war against the spirit. The flesh and the spirit will fight it out daily in your brain and our minds. How do we handle the flesh? How do we deal with it? Well, in Colossians 3, for the rest of the chapter, 3 verse 11, kind of tells us where to go with this. And in verse 5, it says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. And he, kinda, he starts to list them. Fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry, put it to death. He says, put it, you're like, how do I put it to death? Well, notice he uses the word put it to death, which is a phrase has to do with capital punishment. Capital punishment. In Galatians chapter 5, same chapter which you just read, in verse 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Which way should we? Put to death, or capital punishment, our flesh. Gas chamber? Can't suffocate it. Hangman's noose? No. Too quick. Firing squad? No. Lethal injection? No. It says here very clearly in Galatians 5.24, crucify it. Now you might say, yes, that's painful. It is. But it's also slow. When it says crucify the flesh, when you understand crucifixion was a slow and painful t death that took a long time, so too you'll understand why it takes forever for our flesh to die. Our flesh just doesn't seem to go away. It just lingers because it's being crucified. And boy, is it slow sometimes, and boy, is it painful. How? When it pops up, when you see the flesh there, if you can catch it in time before you act on it, you've got to ask God for help. 
You got to fight it. The Bible says to resist the devil and he will flee from you. Ask God to shut your mouth, restrain your hands, turn your direction, keep you from it, actively run from it. And if you catch yourself falling for it, immediately go to the cross for forgiveness and grace. Verse 6, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. It's not, our it's not who we are. We are children of God, children of light. We don't experience the wrath of God. The wrath of God was experienced for our sins on Christ at the cross. I do not go through the wrath of God. I never will. But this is the thing that's so neat is those, these things God's wrath will be on. Us as Christians, we are not called to be carnal or fleshly Christians. We're not called, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> we're not called to that. It's not our thing. We're not wrath-filled people, experiencing wrath, getting wrath. We have the cross. It was there at the cross. The wrath came upon sin. We're new life in Christ Jesus. But that's not us. And notice what it says in verse 7. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. It's the old life. And I used to walk in it. I don't walk in it now. Now we walk in the Spirit. That's one of the greatest things that you can do to keep yourself from falling for the flesh. And, it, it's, and how to deal with it? Walk in the Spirit. Oh, what do, you, what do I do? Just go, you know, okay, I'm walking in the Spirit. I'm walking in the Spirit. Do, do, do. No. To walk in the Spirit means that you ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And you keep on being filled by the Holy Spirit to overflowing. You do what it says in the previous verses in 1 through 4. You set your mind on things above. You keep that view of Christ where he's seated above in heavenly areas. You consider yourself dead. You walk in the Spirit, in the power of the Spirit, and not by the flesh. And in verse 8 through 9, he says, But now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. He not just says put it to death, put to death. Now he says to put it off. Put it off. The word put off is a clothing term. That means to cast it away from yourself like an old garment that has been soiled or has been ruined. We have to put off the flesh like a soiled garment. Have you ever done that before? Got something on yourself? that's disgusting and you cast it off from your body? Oh, we all have. But we're clothed with righteousness. We're clothed with grace. These are the garments that we have upon us, not the flesh. So he says, when the flesh comes up, treat it like a soiled garment and put it off of yourself. Cast it away. You know, when I was, during COVID, I would, they would make you wear a mask into the store or something like that. And, uh, when I would leave, I would always take it off five seconds before I walked out, just to just to just to be just to show them I don't want to live by your rules, you know. And I would cast it off and throw it into the trash, and I would make a big spectacle of it. <laughs> uh, you know what? No one paid attention to me. But this is the thing, guys. We are called to cast off the flesh. Isn't that the same way? Have you ever, remember when you used to take off those masks and you're like, oh, oh, oxygen. That's what I need. That's how it is with the flesh. Sometimes you got that flesh on you and just like, oh, get it away. I want the spirit. I want to walk in the spirit, not by my own carnal desires or my own fleshly appetite, but with the spirit, with the Lord. I want him. And in verse 10, he says, and, and I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge according to the image of, of him who created him. So we kill it, capital punishment, we put it off, and then we put on the new man or woman. 
What does it mean to put on the new man and woman? We'll, we'll, we'll get into it more next week through in chapters 12 through 17. Uh, sorry, in, in verse 12 through 17. But it says, hey, put on the new man. That new creation in Christ. Put on that. That's how you... Those are the clothes that we need to have on. That's how we keep ourselves from the flesh is we have to clothe ourselves with the new man that has been prepared by Jesus Christ. The new man or woman of Jesus Christ is a person who's in the scriptures. They're in the word. The new man or woman is in prayer. The new man or woman is serving the Lord. The new man or woman is in fellowship with the saints. The new man and woman is in the spirit. They're walking in the spirit and obedient to the things of God. That's what we need to be. And when we so obsess over those things, when we put ourselves in that situation where we're saying, Lord, I just want to make sure that that's the man or woman I want to be, just like you, acting like you, that's what I want. It's so sweet. It's like you starve out the flesh. You're walking in the spirit. You're walking in the newness of life. You're, you're walking and you're putting it, you don't feed it. You're trying to actively kill your flesh, your own, those sinful members of your body. And so you're constantly doing those things and you give it no oxygen. You give it no room to grow. It has nothing to, to it, it can't survive, it can't go out. You crucified it. Because there's too much of Jesus for that flesh to live. And then verse, you know, that's the thing. The flesh will always survive and the flesh will always pop up when there's room for it to pop up. When we simply dive head first and headlong, into the wonderful things of Jesus Christ. When we saturate ourselves in the Word. When we bathe ourselves in the Spirit. When we're all about the cross. When our minds are flooded with the things of Jesus Christ, the flesh will not pop up. It can't. You know why? Because there's too much Jesus around. How can a mold grow in the light? How can something so evil pop up when the creator of heaven and earth is there? It's impossible. And so the spirit has to rule in our hearts. You're like, is that possible, Andrew? Yeah, it is. Paul wouldn't have told us. The Lord wouldn't have taught us these things if it wasn't possible. See, guys, I want us to be in such a way that we are constantly soaked. We're like filled up sponges with the, with the things of Jesus Christ. And so when we're filled up with the things of Jesus Christ, walking in the Spirit, the blood of Jesus, the Word and prayer, worship, and we're doing the things of Jesus, we're being obedient unto Him, obeying, kindness, love, gentleness, peace, and we just have that heavenly mind the flesh doesn't have time to pop up. And then when it does, you can squish it real fast. It's like, oh, I, there it is. And you, it, 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 it's, it's more manageable. When people come up to me and says, I'm having struggles with my flesh, I totally understand. It happens. We all go through it. I'm struggling with my flesh, Pastor Andrew. I hear you. I'm with you. But what do we do to solve it? We cannot, with our flesh, to say, Oh, well, you know, that's just who I am. You know, me saying bad things to the president or doing it on, on, in Albuquerque, that's just part of who I am. It's not who I am. It's, it's my old life. It's not who I am one bit. We can't make excuses for our flesh. We can't say, well, you know, that's how I am. Or I've even heard, well, that's how, people, that's how the Lord made me. No, it's not how the Lord made you. It's not our character any longer. It's who we are in the world. But we're not supposed to be that anymore. Jesus has changed us into a new man and woman. 
Don't make excuses for your flesh. Now also on the flip side, don't become some legalistic nut also with your flesh. Don't be like saying, oh, you know, oh, my flesh, I'm such a horrible, rotten person. Well, we know, okay? We got you. I am too. I'm so bad. I can't, you know, and, and you know what you have? You get into that uh, flagellation type stuff where you just kind of, you know, oh, you get a whip and you walk and you go, whoo, 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 and you start beating yourself up. You ever done that before? Oh, I'm such a horrible person. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do? We, see, guys, this is the thing. My flesh, you know, oh, and this is what happens. When we start beating up our own flesh, it will just be a matter of time until we start beating up other people's flesh. And it will be a time where we start looking at them and saying, hey, look at you, you sinner. And we start being nitpicky about other people's failures and fleshly desires. How do we handle the flesh? Kill it at the cross. Walk in the Spirit. Be obsessed with the things of the Lord. Put on the new man or woman that God has made for you. And look what it says in verse 11, which is very interesting. It says that, and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. We'll get into that next week. Where there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. He goes back to the church. And he says there's no... He goes, listen, in the church there's no more distinctions. There's no, there's no things of the flesh there, Jew or Greek. Uh, culture or, uh, uh, or uh, uh, circumcision or uh, uncircumcision. No, no, uh, no religiosity. Uh, the flesh will produce religiosity. Nor barbarian or Scythian. Uh, those are uh, nationalities. It's not about us. You know, well, I'm just, I got a hot temper because I'm Irish. No, no, no. no. I have a drinking problem because I'm Irish. What? No, no, no. I, I am who I am because of my race. I'm barbarian. I'm a Scythian. No. No, you're not. Slave nor free. Well, you know, I'm just... That's, that's economics. There's nothing about culture, economics, education, racial or religious classes. In the church, you're a whole new creation in Christ. You're there. You can't, there's no excuses in the flesh for that. But notice what it says here. But Christ is all and in all. This is really neat. Because Jesus is it. In the church, it's all about Jesus. It's not about our who we are or where we come from. Or If it is, that's the flesh. There's a lot of flesh in the church today. There needs to be more of Jesus Christ all in all. All and in all. Now, when he says in all, it's not pantheism, okay, guys? You, you would be shocked how many people I've met who are into Wicca and, wi and witchcraft and all that. So it's like, oh, the, the God is in all. Even Jesus said that. He's in all things. He's speaking in context of the church here. He's in every Christian. That's it. He's in all. He's in us. Christ is all. He's our everything. Just like I said, if when Jesus is our everything, then there's going to be no room for the flesh. The f you know, isn't that true? The flesh is empty. The flesh is an empty thing. It has nothing to offer us. It has nothing to give us. It never fulfills us. It never, it never, it can never give us what we need. We think it can but it never can. It's, it's nothing. It's empty. But Jesus is all in all. It's everything we need. It's all and in all. It's everything we need is in Jesus Christ. How do you conquer the flesh? More Jesus. More spirit. More word. More prayer. More him. Will Andrew, will it pop up? Even when I got the, even when I have more Jesus, more word, more flesh, 
I, more, not more flesh. Uh, more, more word. That's the, that's the cold talking. More Jesus. More word. More prayer. All that th- stuff. Will the flesh still will it come through? Oh, sometimes it does. It's like a weed. You ever seen those weeds that kind of burrow through your... Gr- and you're like, how did that sucker get up from in my driveway? It just... There it is. How did it get there? It does. But then you got to realize, then you deal with it. You confess it. When the flesh hits and it breaks through, you got to confess it. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for this failure. Forgive me for my fleshly actions today, Lord. And you know he'll forgive you? Because he's a forgiving God. The Christian life is not shoots and ladders. You don't walk through this Christian life and you hit a, la- a, a shoot and you just go, whoop, got to start all the way back. See you at New Believers class tomorrow at 10. <laughs> You're like, oh, I messed up. I got in the flesh. Where's Greg Glory? you know? <laughs> I'm going to start all over again. I got to do a Harvest Crusade. No. <laughs> Guys, it is, you just got to get it confessed. Ask God to forgive you and he'll forgive you. Right now, if you guys have been struggling with the flesh today and you feel like you don't have victory over your fleshly desires, well, let's just spend some time right now praying and asking God to forgive us, asking the Spirit to infill us, asking for strength to be obedient to Him. And so, uh, Tyler, can you come out? We're going to just have one last song and And we just need to take some time in prayer and just have some time where we just seek God's face and ask the Lord to do a work. So let's pray. Dear Father, we just come before you and we just thank you so much for this time of being in your word today. We love you, Lord. With every eye closed and with every head bowed, if there's anybody here today that is struggling with the flesh, maybe you got that quick temper, maybe you got that perverted streak, maybe you got that thing that you know is not of the Lord, but it's of the children of wrath. It's not of the Lord, it's not of this new creation. And you've just been dealing with it. Well, let's deal with it right now. With every eye closed, with every head bowed, Lord, we just ask that you would just forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for these fleshly desires that we have. Forgive us for our failures. Forgive us for messing up. Lord, we ask that you would crucify our flesh right now. Lord, you would remove it. Lord, help us to reckon it dead, consider it to be dead and not alive or have power over us. Lord, we ask that you would just do a work in this way. Lord, if there's anybody who is in bondage to the flesh, Lord, I ask that you would give them freedom right now. Lord, just fill us with your Holy Spirit. Come upon us. Lord, just let us have victory over these things. We love you, Jesus. We praise your name. We glorify you. And we ask that this morning, Lord Jesus, that you would be just empowering us with your Holy Spirit. And that you would just see fit to do a work in our heart. We love you, Lord. Lord, it says in the scriptures that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Lord, we want to be free from the flesh. Let's just spend some just time while Tyler plays. Just to, I can't. I could pray for you, but you need to pray for yourself. The flesh is desperately wicked. Who could know it? But yet, the height, the depth, the length, and breadth of God's love is greater. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to give you strength to fight it. 
Well, just how about you just hand it over to the Lord and say, take this member, this fleshly thing in my life, Lord, I just commit it to you, Lord, for destruction. I reckon it dead. Fill us to overflowing with your spirit. So there will be no room for the flesh to grow. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify your name. How great you are. You're so good to us, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In your holy name. Amen. Let's stand, guys. Just keep serving the Lord. Obsess yourself about the things of God and give no place for the enemy. Just be free from all that junk and the Lord will totally give you a peace that passes understanding and victory for the day. It's a fight. It's not easy. The flesh isn't going to roll over and say, okay, I surrender. No. The flesh is going to fight, dude. And so you just take it to the cross and let him handle it. Whether it be anger or whatever you're dealing with, just let the Lord do the work. Amen? Amen. I love you guys, and let's worship the Lord, Tyler.